Speaking of Sports, I'm your host, Jared Slack. The NFL Draft came and left Nashville, Tennessee over this past weekend. If you've never heard of it, that's where the best players from college football have been drafted in the NFL. So in 2020, please tell the Giants that they're supposed to be picking the best players from college football. The top three picks went as expected. Kyler Murray, Joey Bosa, Quinn Williams. Number four with the Raiders, however, did not go as expected. They drafted defensive lineman Clinton Farrell. ESPN had him ranked 30th overall. <clears throat> if Oakland really wanted Clinton, they could have traded back, acquired more picks, and still got him late in the first round. <clears throat> in my opinion, Farrell was the best, the third best defense lineman just on the Clemson up front. This draft, however, was still really exciting because you still could have had three or four number one picks overall if Kyler didn't go first. You had Joey Bosa, Clinton Williams, and Ed, Ed Oliver, who's compared to Aaron Donald. <clears throat> Let's get back to the, the Giants, who drafted quarterback Daniel Jones. I have an opinion that might be widely unpopular. The Giants are obviously in rebuilding and looking for a franchise quarterback. Teams will panic and draft a below-average quarterback just to say they have one. Why not keep rebuilding? Build your, defensive, build your defense, build an offensive line, and when the perfect quarterback comes along, he has an offensive line that protects him and a defense that has his back. Teams need to keep in mind that in one or two years, a couple great quarterbacks will be coming to the draft. In one year, you have Tua from Alabama. In two years, you have Trevor Lawrence from Clemson who last year looked like an NFL-ready quarterback as a true freshman. In three or four years, the Duke quarterback will be irrelevant, and the Giants should still would still be searching for a franchise quarterback. The Bats woke up on the road this weekend for the Rangers for the first time this year. At home, the Rangers scored a tremendous amount of runs opposed to on the road. However, the Rangers scored 15 runs on Saturday and 14 runs on Sunday with a total of 29 runs in these last two days. Mike Miner had seven innings, pitched seven innings, and he allowed three hits and just one earned run. Miner's month of April has been up there with the best in baseball. He has an ERA of 1.75 and a whip of .83. For those of you who don't know what whip is, it's walks plus hits per, per inning pitch. A pitcher with a sub one whip, just like Miner, is in great shape. Lance Lynn had just as good as outing as Miner on Sunday with seven innings, five hits, and just one run. By far the best outing of the, of the year. He has an ERA of 5.45. Hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully, turning his season around. Thank you for watching Speaking of Sports. I've been your host, Jared Slack. Join me next Wednesday at 2 p.m. on the Mute Mobile Media YouTube Network. <laughs>